ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு என்பிடிஎல் என்ஓசி கோர்ஸ் ஆன் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் டெக்னாலஜி பார்ட் டூ வி வில் பிகின் சாப்டர் ஃபோர் வித் சர்டன் அதர் நோஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் காம்பேக்ட்னஸ் அதர் இன் த சென்ஸ் வி ஹவ் ஸ்டடீடு காம்பேக்ட்னஸ் இட் செல்ஃப் க்ளோத் ரிலேட்டட் வாஸ் லிண்டல் ஆஃப் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டி and then we have local compactness and para compactness right so now we shall study the mother notions here these notions have been selected by just by maybe you can say personal taste or rather one's belief that these are the more useful ones in analysis and topology central analysis and topology when we study function spaces which may not be compact okay yet have certain other features of compactness okay so that is what we would like to study like para compactness was one of our obsession we shall also study these properties for metric spaces wherein many of them come together okay then we shall give a criterion for metric spaces to be compact okay lastly we give a very important application of this topology of function spaces namely what are known as ascoli's theorem actually we will do only one of them so that is the general idea of general uh, plan for chapter 4 so let us now begin with this uh, module 15 start with any topological space then i am going to introduce three different notions of compactness here the first one is countable compact so i may just denote it by uh, cc in the in the following uh, uh, section all together so countable compactness if every countable open cover for x admits a finite subcover this is similar to lindelof but in contrast lindelof property gives you any cover to countable cover so countable compactness gives you countable cover to finite cover so you can see that lindelof plus countable compactness implies compactness okay that is one easy uh, consequence of this definition the second one is limit point contact which has something to do already with our experience with metric spaces namely dealing with sequences dealing with uh, limit points so if every infinite subset of x has an accumulation point or what is called a limit point that is called limit point compactness this is also called bolzano weierstrass property bolzano weierstrass property partly is also reflected in the next one but we will call it as sequential compactness and denote it by sc if every sequence in x admits a subsequence which is convergent in fact in uh, standard real analysis whenever you have this property every sequence bounded sequence a subsequence which is convergent and so on you prove you you state it as a bolzano weierstrass theorem but this property is not bolzano weierstrass property so you have to make it a slight distinction here bolzano weierstrass property if you want to refer it it is limit point compactness that is why i have called it limit point compact not to confuse with the standard bolzano weierstrass theorem as such okay so countable compactness somewhat similar to lindelof but in a somewhat dual to that one limit point compactness sequential compact 
okay in a matrix pair you may have seen that compactness implies other three properties these are the standard properties of compact matrix spaces so we have extracted these properties and made it a definition in the general case okay in general this may not be true compact spaces may not imply any of these things we will have to be careful here something may be yes some other thing may not be so so let us go through this carefully here so let us check these things are fresh one by one in the general setup okay start the compact space it is clearly countably compact the first part is very nice okay <laughs> after all every open cover will admit a finite sub cover countable covers <laughs> automatically admit a finite sub cover so that is compact space implies it is countable compact now take the second one that a b an infinite subset of x if a has no accumulation point then it follows that a is a closed discrete subset of x right in the closure of any set a there are two types of points those which are points of a itself otherwise they will be accumulation points right if they are not accumulation points they will be open subsets of x so these are the three types of uh, points in a set okay so if a has no accumulation point then it follows that a must be a closed discrete subset in particular being closed it is a compact thing. i start with a compact space right but in a compact discrete subset we must be there are only finitely many points okay so this is a contradiction we started with an infinite set therefore x must have a limit point so 1 and 2 are fine compactness implies 1 as well as compactness implies 2 maybe 3 is also true and then you are lucky you have to be careful okay so finally let xn be any sequence in x where x is a compact set if the image of the sequence is a finite set then there will be a subsequence which takes a constant value and is convergent on the other hand if the image of the sequence is a infinite set we just don't know how to extract a convergent subsequence out of it okay indeed it happens that compactness does not imply sequential compactness this may be somewhat uh, surprise for you so you have to be be careful with this property so let us first uh, understand an example also here let us uh, you know verify an example here and make sure that compactness in general need not imply sequential compactness okay so don't confuse it with brojano ostras properties all the time so that is the whole idea okay so here is an example take z2 is standard notation for the space consisting of minus 1 plus 1 in the multiplicative notation or in the additive notation the group consisting of 0 1 0 1 right additive group so for us it is just a discrete space with the two points that solve we don't care about the group structure here though i have used the notation this group group with two elements okay take z2 cross z2 cross z2 how many copies take p power n namely this n is the natural number the power set of okay i have a some you know deliberate some in, intention here denoting like this the power set of n is nothing but the cardinality of c okay cardinality of r right one could have just written c here so but i want to use this specific uh, description of this cardinality so this is 
the power set of n all subsets of the natural numbers so you take that many copies of z2 and take the cartesian product the product space what is the topology on z2 discrete okay so indexing set is power power set of n okay so by tikhonov theorem we know that x is compact okay product of any space, uh, sequence of uh, product of families of compacts with compact here the same set is there same space is there which is a compact set okay we shall claim that this space is not sequentially compact okay so suppose fn is a sequence in x defined as follows to show that it is not sequentially compact i have to produce one sequence which has no subsequence which is convergent right so i i will give you an example namely take this sequence fn defined as follows what is fn fn's are functions from power set of n into z2 right so fn of a subset a what is a a is a subset of natural numbers is equal to 1 if this n the nth term the index n belongs to a okay otherwise define fn of a equal to 0 for example f1 of a f1 of say 2 3 4 5 will be 0 f1 of 1 1 1 1 2 3 4 that will be 1 because 1 is there and so on okay now let f and k be any subsequence okay take a to be after taking the sub subsequence you have take a to be n1 first one n3 n5 and so on just take the odd you know the odd numbers here i mean in the indexing n1 n3 n 2k plus 1 take f of those so take those numbers first form is the subset a of its uh, natural numbers then the sequence obtained by projecting fn k on the a coordinate see after all the coordinates of this one this pr product are uh, indexed by p power you know pn power set of n so the eighth coordinate will be what fn i of a right so what is fn fn 1 of a n1 is there right what is fn 2 of a fn 2 is not there n2 is not there so it will be zero what about fn fn 3 of a n3 is there so it will be one so this sequence is alternating sequence 1 0 1 0 1 0 and so on okay indefinitely hence this is not convergent in z2 anything which is convergent in z2 must be eventually a constant here right so being the projection map which continues if fnk were convergent to something fn i of a would have been convergent so since this is not convergent fnk is not convergent fnk is totally arbitrary subsequence of fn so we have proved that this space is not sequentially compact okay now let us try to do some other implications on the positive side okay the first thing is countable compactness implies limit point compactness under t1 axiom the converse also is true so you can just say 1 implies 3 So one implies two limit point, and under T one axiom, they are equal. Okay, you can see that slowly we are bringing them nearer to the metric spaces. 
वन स्पेसिस आर स्लाइटली क्लोजर टू मेट्रिक स्पेस मेट्रिक स्पेस आर वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग दे आर हाउस डॉस नॉर्मल एंड सॉन्ग ओके सो कंप्लीटली नॉर्मल एक्चुअली सो लेट अस सी हाउ वन प्रूव इट द होल थिंग इज नाउ यू आर नॉट सपोज टू यूज इन हिम डिस्टेंस एंड सॉन यू हैव टू डू एवरीथिंग प्योरली टेपोलॉजिकली सो लेट एक्स बी काउंटेबली कॉम्पैक्ट and a b an infinite subset if possible suppose a has no you know accumulation point this means that a is a closed discrete subset that's what we have seen earlier also being closed subset of x a itself is countably compact so this is an easy thing to see that closed subsets are Closed subset of a countably compact space is countably compact, just like closed subset of a compact space is compact. Exactly same proof will work. Clearly, there exists a countably infinite subset B of A because we started with an infinite subset. Okay, then B is also countably compact and discrete. Countably, you know, this is a countable subset. already it will be automatically countably compact because started with no uh, accumulation point is discrete but b has a countable open cover little b b belong to b because this discrete which has no finite sub cover so that's a contradiction okay so any infinite set must have a limit point if it is countably compact let us prove now the converse under the axiom t1s for x so x is a t1 and the limit point compact now you take any countable open cover un for x if possible suppose there is no finite sub cover what does that mean U1 is doesn't cover it, so there will be an X1, which is in the complement of U1. Then there you can find an X2 in the complement of U1 union U2. Then you can take X3 in the complement of U1 U2 union U3. Each time you can make that the new element is taken distinct from the original choices. If you cannot do that, then that means already you have exhausted the whole thing, right? That's the whole cover. since no finite sub cover is there you can always choose new elements here so you get an infinite subset xn a equal to xn xn long n is an infinite subset remember that the nth term does not belong to u1 union u2 union un that is all we have to show now Use the limit point compact property. X must uh, uh, X be a limit point of this infinite set. Then X n will X itself will be in one of the U n's because it is covered by or the whole X is covered by U n. So X will be in one of the U n's this limit point. But then X is a T one space. It follows that. U n intersection A itself is an infinite set. So this is where we are using the T one property. A limit point, okay, if it belongs to an open set, intersection with the original set A here must be an infinite set, okay. But we know that none of X k k bigger than n are inside U n. Oh, that's a contradiction. Okay, so only five. Each U N will contain only finitely many of these extensions. So that's the contradiction. So, so what we have proved? We have proved that under T one axiom, the first one and second one, countable compactness and limit point compactness are the same. Next, similar result, sequential compactness. implies limit point compactness the three implies two now under the axiom t1 
and first countability, something more, the converse holds. One implies two always, and three implies two always. So the two is the the uh, weakest one. But under T1 as one and two are same. Under T1 and first countability, two and three are equivalent. That is the theorem. So let us prove this theorem also. This is also equally easy. X be a sequentially compact space. A be a infinite set. Then we can define a sequence X n in A of distinct points, right? An infinite set has a sequence of distinct points. Let A be a limit point of some subsequence. Then it is easily checked that A is actually a accumulation point. So infinite set and distinct points is in. Is important here. Okay, so very straightforward proof. There is nothing hidden here. Now, conversely, let now X be a T one and first countable. Okay, and X is a limit point compact space. Now, start with X n be a sequence in it, and A equal to set of all X n n belong to n. Okay. So the sub, the sequence is different. Remember, the set is different. The sequence x1, x2, xn. You have to write all the infinite terms. But a sequence, a set may have only finitely many terms. You see, a is all xn such that n is there. So this is a, this is the image of this sequence. That is what it is. If a is finite, then clearly there is a subsequence n k such that. X n k is equal to a. It may be eventually constant, then there is no problem. Otherwise, there will be a repetition. After some stage, there will be so that is what it is. That means that there is subsequence n k such that X n k is the same a for some a, and that subsequence is convergent. Okay, so if a is finite, it is no problem. Suppose now a is infinite. Then let A be an accumulation point of infinite subsequence. I must have an accumulation point. Okay. Now let U and N belong to N be a decreasing family of neighborhoods of A which form a local base at A. So this is where T1 nest is used. It is a countable local base. As soon as you label them, then you can take U1, U1 intersection U2, U intersection U3, and so on. So you can make it decreasing sequence of neighborhoods. Okay, that will form a local base at X. Since X is T1, it follows that A intersection U N is an infinite set. This we have used earlier also, right? Because A is a an accumulation point of capital A. So A intersection U N is infinite set for each N. Therefore, we can choose. A subsequence like X R one belonging to U one intersection A. Now there exists R two bigger than R one, such that X R two will be inside U two intersection A. Having chosen R n, then we choose R n plus one, such that this R n plus one is bigger than R n, and X R n plus one is inside U n plus one intersection A. So distinct and larger and larger index has been used here, so that we have what a subsequence. Okay, inside A, U n plus one intersection. It follows that X R n is a subsequence of X i, which is convergent to A, of course. Right, because all these U n plus one, U n plus two, etc. They become smaller and smaller neighborhoods of of uh, this A. Okay, so first countability as well as T one ness is used here to extract a subsequence out of a sequence. Okay, in the case when the sequence is infinite, if the sequence is consists of finite number of elements, then there is no problem. That that will always have a Subsequence is convergent. 
the next theorem is a sequentially compact T1 space is countably compact. Now I am going from 3 to 1. Okay, sequentially compact T1 space is countably compact. This proof is not at all new at all. I mean, after receiving the two uh, proofs of the previous two theorems, I feel that you should be able to extract a proof on your own. So try your hand. Okay, this will be left as an exercise, so as an assignment to you. Next theorem is if A is count, if X is first countable, okay, compact space, then it is sequentially compact. Right in the beginning, we saw that compactness does not imply sequential compactness. However, under first countability, compactness implies sequential compact. Okay, so that may be the reason why co compact metric spaces are sequentially compact, you see, because metric spaces are always first countable. Okay, so this way the essence of all these properties comes out, okay, rather than just if you study them on metric spaces. Okay, so how do we prove this? Start with a sequence xn in a first countable space x and suppose this, this has no subsequence which is convergent. Okay, this assumption starting with a sequence which has no subsequence which is convergent. We first claim that every point in x has a neighborhood u such that xn is inside u only for finitely many n inside n. There may not be any point, that is fine. If at all, okay, I can choose some open, for each point I can choose some open set, only finitely many elements from this xn will be there. Okay, suppose this is not true. What is the meaning of this is not true? I am claiming that for every point something. So, not true means there is some point that x belongs to x with such. There is at least one point such that every neighborhood of u, okay, every neighborhood u of x, infinitely many x sense will be there. No matter what, how small you choose that u to be. Okay, so this is the denial of our claim. Now, let B n be a countable local base at x. So, now first countability enters into that. Choose n 1 such that the first one x n 1 is inside B 1. Okay. Now, you choose next one so that it is bigger than that. The indexing is bigger n k n n k plus 1 is bigger than n k. So, that x n plus k x n n k plus 1 is inside b k plus 1 and so on. Okay. After, after having chosen n k and x n k inside b n. So, this is possible since there are infinitely many n such that x n is inside b k plus 1. So, we have chosen only finitely many next one can be taken to be bigger than that. Now, it is clear that this it is a subsequence okay, and this subsequence will convert to x because they are inside smaller and smaller neighborhoods of this local base. Okay. Thus, we have proved that for every point x in x, there is an open set ux such that x in ux and xn is in ux for only finitely many n inside n. Ux is a neighborhood and for each point is a neighborhood wherein the given sequence only finitely many of them will be there. Now look at the open cover Ux x belonging to x. This has a finite subcover because x is compact. 
see compactness enters only now so that would mean that the sequence xn has only finitely many points right where are they they have to be somewhere but they are contained inside finitely many ux1 ux2 uxk each of them contains only finitely many therefore there are only finitely many points and hence as a constant subsequence which is a contradiction so we have proved actually something stronger if all this happens the sequence has a constant subsequence okay we wanted to prove only that it is convergent so i repeat what we have proved is now the first countable compact space is sequentially compact so you must be satisfied now that whatever you have learnt in metric spaces is correct okay even if you haven't learnt it now all these together will give you whatever you have learnt in the metric space because metric space is t1 as well as first countable let's solve here is a picture which will help you to remember uh, what are all the implication compactness countable compactness limit point compactness start with compactness add first countability you can go to sequential compactness start with sequential compactness you can always go to limit point compactness put t1 ness and first countability you can come back start from here you can always come to limit point compactness but under t1 ness you can go back also okay so this is all what we have proved so far so far we have never gone back here right so that is our next step what what will imply this one that is the kind of thing we would like to do all right i think that is enough for today so next time we will go into deeper into the this one namely we will bring now metric spaces and the criteria which will finally give you will allow you to go from somewhere here to here and so on all right thank you